Hello guys, it's Marcus, and today I'm going to show you how to use World Regeneration for T-Shock. Actually, I need to go to the different server to do that. Okay, so World Regeneration allows you to regenerate the entire world as it were, or at least to the point of when you saved it. So when you've generated a completely new world with Terraria, the first thing you want to do is save the world. Um, this command will basically save the entire world, and since this is a small world, it'll go pretty quick. If you do larger ones, uh, you're going to have to have a little bit of patience till it completes. So this world is now saved. Let's go ahead and force the regeneration. We got about five minutes from that. World regen slash slash world regen force forces the regeneration counter go to straight five minutes. Uh, it's a total of six hours by default. Let's go ahead and change this world. And these places will regenerate. Now, uh, let's go ahead and make a region. If you don't know already how to do that, just do region set one, select one point, and then select the secondary point. And region define spawn. So this region is now defined as spawn, but we want to make this region Z spawn 100. Any region that is 100 or higher in Z level will be ignored by the world regeneration. So that's very useful if you're trying to make sure that a certain spawn area where people begin to play doesn't get changed when it regenerates. And that's only assuming you actually do this with one world and not with two different types because each different world has a completely different set of height, uh, surface zone, space zone, and so forth. So if you want to make a universal kind of world, you may want to set the spawn a little higher. Uh, you'll have to experiment with that in order to get through. Now world regeneration will regenerate everything, including signs and chests that you have saved. Normally, however, there are no signs in an original world, so you don't have to worry about that. Let's go ahead and find a chest before the regeneration goes into play. You can also just go ahead and move all this stuff. Any plants, mushrooms, rocks, they all will come back in three minutes. We're going to have to find... here's a chest. Uh, all chests from uh, World Regeneration are actually called World Chests. So you know the difference between a chest that you placed and a chest that's made by World Regeneration. It'll just be called Chest, and it has no name because that's the original. And if you rename it, save. It doesn't appear until you actually give it an original name. Uh, there is actually another chest down here too. Let's loot that one, remove it, and place it in the exact same spot with a different ID number. I don't think there's anything else down here. So we've got a couple of things going on. We've got chests, and we've changed the terrain a bit. So things that were there are not going to be there anymore. World Regeneration is really useful if you just want to start over the whole world again with every resource available to you. Let's go ahead and go to the spawn point. So this region right here is protected. Nothing gets changed here. Here you can put a little thing in here and a sign and say, well, the guide is in the way right now. Let me click on that. But this sign won't get edited. Now you can find out what kind of worlds you've created. Just type world regen list. It'll show you the ID of the various worlds you've saved. Right now we only have one, so there's no way of changing that at the moment until we regenerate a new world with Terraria and then save it. 
You can manually load any world at any time by typing load world and you'll need the ID, which is good, you can get that from the list. There are a couple of world region commands that you can use. Time and force are specifically the two important ones. Time tells you how much time you have before the next regeneration and force forces the regeneration to five minutes. If you want to force the world regeneration to one minute, all you type is world regeneration force one. But in about 18 seconds, this world is going to fully regenerate, ignoring this area completely. So let's see how long that takes. We should be there in about five seconds. Yep, four, three, two, one, boom. So now the world is regenerating. And since it's a small world, it shouldn't take too long. Hopefully. And there you go. Now you'll notice the trees are cut off here. That's because this specific area I've marked is protected and it won't be changed. So if you want a protected area, which is very important, do not hesitate to use the Z region method, which is, comes with T Shock standard. And now if we go over to the rocks and the places we edited, the mushrooms and the, the chests, they should actually have fully regenerated with all their content. So here's the mushrooms. Where are they? There they are. They're all here. Brand new. Every plant. I think even the rocks. Mm -hmm. Even the rocks. And over here are the chests. And they should be world chests. With the exact same content we looted before the regeneration. So if you're running a server that you want to be as close to as vanilla or you just hate having to start a whole brand new world every freaking time and then build everything, this is probably the best opportunity to do so. It'll regenerate a completely live world on an active server and you do not have to restart the server at all. This is really good if you'd say, okay everybody I'm making a new world, it's gonna take a while for it to come back online. You just don't want to lose any people. This is a good way to do it. You can also start a secondary server, create the um, world in the instance, save that world, and then it'll immediately be available in your other instance of this server. So when you type world region list and you've saved another world from another instance, it'll be here. So you don't have to worry about it. And you can instantly load it with world load, should you have that ID. Now if I were to load this world right now, What it'll do is it'll t oh, I didn't type it right. It, what it'll do is it'll say the various things it loaded up compared to the natural regeneration. It'll tell you, okay, I've loaded 165 of 165 chests. I've loaded no signs and I loaded no tile entities. When does the total chest count change? Well, specifically, it'll change. For example, if you protected a chest, any chest in a protected region of Z100 will be ignored. So that chest specifically will not regenerate. Um, we can test this right now if we go back to that chest over there. I should not try to kill myself with the uh, rod or we're going to have a problem. All the mushrooms are back. Alright, so here's a chest. Let's go ahead and protect this region with region set 1. Put one here, region set 2. Put it here. And say region... Uh, define chest. Then region Z chest 100. And now load this world again. I don't know the actual ID, so let me just uh, load that up. Load world, and it's one four six nine nine eight seven one zero eight. Okay, it should now say one hundred sixty four out of one hundred sixty five chests were regenerated, and you'll notice it does say that this chest was completely ignored. If I actually looted this chest, and then world would regenerate, supposedly. 
the chest would still be empty and it would not have used that chest. So basically only 164 of the chests in this world were actually refilled and restored to their original state. This chest specifically, however, was ignored. So if I remove this region, all 165 chests will be fully restored. And there you have it, 165 out of 165 with the loot that we originally wanted to get. So you can just loot that thing again every six hours, depending on what kind of regeneration you have. Now, you can change some of the configurations in the T-Shock folder, and to do so, all you got to do is go to your T-Shock folder, wherever it is. Go to T-Shock and go to the world regeneration JSON file and open it with a word editor or notepad plus plus preferably and you'll have a regeneration interval. The regeneration interval obviously is six hours and this option here ignore chests allows you to ignore literally the chests. so if you want to just regenerate the world but you don't want to regenerate any chests with content let's say you're using infinite chests which is a separate plugin you might want to set this to true um, if you are using infinite chests, you should also set this to true because the various chests that are being regenerated by the plugin contain vanilla options, so you want to convert them to infinite chests. So set this one to true if you're doing that. Otherwise, just set that one to true and you don't have to worry about chests at all. These are actually the only options so far in this plugin. So if you want to change those options, go to that configuration. You can change the t interval limit to any amount you'd like, 6 hours, 12 hours, 24 hours. That's completely up to you. So here you have world regeneration. Very simple to use, easy to set up, and there should be no problems with it. Be reminded, um, this plugin may not work with certain plugins, and if you do find them, just report it on the T-Shock forums. And as always, guys, don't be a dick, hit escape and quit, and I'll see you in the next demonstration video if I come up with one. Until then.